Hello and welcome. I am the Sterling and today we are playing Going Medieval. Going Medieval is a medieval colony sim building game that's been around for a little while now and a game I often find myself going back to. But just recently the game has had what I feel is a massive fundamental update. Something that we have all been waiting for. They have now added water to the game. And so I've decided it's a great time to start a new series. So sit back, grab a cold one and let's get started. So we'll be playing on the standard difficulty, which means we'll be getting enemy raids and environmental events, and the enemy raids will become more and more difficult as we build bigger and more powerful defences. So we'll be playing the new life scenario, which gives us a very comfortable and balanced beginning with three settlers. We'll be starting in spring and we'll have plenty of resources. So we're off to a good start there. We'll be playing on a hillside map, so the weather won't get too extreme in either direction, hot or cold. There will be plenty of resources, which will be good. Now I'd like to introduce you to the three settlers of Stirlington. We have Stirling, Eleanor, and Alfred. So let's embark. A new life. The plague has ravished the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty. Brutally scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed, nothing would ever be the same again. As the earth quickened in the spring of the year 1353, Sterling, Eleanor and Alfred set off into the wilderness to claim a piece of land as their own, as was their right in the eyes of the god and under the law. Here they may lay down the fundamentals for some kind of future, perhaps hope will follow. Good land is there for the taking in all four corners of this once mighty land. Citizens are rebuilding in the hope that the horrors of the past few years can be left behind. It's possible that there will be fighting, drought, sickness and hunger. But what of it? Life goes on, says Eleanor, and so must we. In a landscape of rolling hills and ancient crumbling forts, the companions trekked. Each ascent rewarded Alfred with a view that stretched for many leagues. No enemy approach would be unseen, he thought. They built a camp that would, in time, become the settlement of Stirlington. So here we go. So straight off the bat, we're going to pause. We've got too much to do and we can't just fluff about. In my last playthrough, I had a lot of glitches with the water doing weird and not so wonderful things. I'm not sure if anyone else has had these issues with the water. The only way I found to fix it was to install the dev controls mod as you see here. And then come over here to toggle water debug UI and click on that. And it will bring up this water control. And then all I had to do is click clear water. And what that did is it cleared the water completely. Then the water freely flowed once again. And it fixed all the little glitches and bugs I had. Now before we can hit play, there's a few things we need to take care of first. So first of all, we have to set up a schedule. Here in the schedule tab, we build a work roster and a leisure roster. We tell them when they can sleep, play, and work. At different times of the year, I give them a different roster. So during autumn and spring, I have them work through the day. During summer, I have them work of a night time when it's blistering hot during the day. And then during winter, I try to keep them inside as much as possible. So those that work inside can continue working, but those that are building or mining or any of those sorts of jobs, I try and keep them inside as much as possible and, and, and wait for the warmer months. So the roster I usually use is very simple. They play for an hour. They work for six. They play for another hour. They work for another six, they play for two hours, and then they sleep for eight. So I'll just copy that and give it to all of them. There we go. The roster is done. Next is jobs. I'm just going to clear this out so we have a nice clean slate to work with. There we go. Nice clean slate. The way the jobs work is you prioritize each job. One through to five. One being more, most important. Five being least important. So straight off the bat, I always put patient as number one priority and convalesce as being number one priority. That way, if they get sick or injured, they'll drop whatever they're doing and they'll go and get healthy. Now, as for the rest of the jobs, as you can see, some of their boxes here are different colors. You've got gold, silver, bronze, and brown, and then grayed out. The gold boxes means they're very good at doing the job. Silver means that they're average at it, and then brown and etc. They're rubbish. You'll also notice that some of the boxes have stars. The stars represent how much they enjoy doing that job. 
So no star means they don't enjoy it. One star means they, they do enjoy it. And then two stars, they really like doing it. So them enjoying a job means that they're not going to get sick of it anytime soon. So that's a good thing. So as you can see, the Sterling has a very high intellectual level of 40, just like in real life. That means he is perfectly suited for doing the research task. Also, he's got two stars in it, meaning that he'll very much enjoy doing it. So he won't get sick of it. I'm just going to go through now and start filling out the rest of the jobs, depending on their skills. The Sterling will be our resident doctor. This is the only other job that I'll make a priority one is tending. So the Sterling will drop everything he's doing to tend to other people's wounds. Next, I've made research and art a priority of two. That's his main job. His main job is doing research. Followed by mining and construction on a priority of three. Next is Eleanor. Looking at it, she's going to be our cook. So we'll make that a priority of two. And she'll also be responsible for slaughtering our animals. So we'll give that a two. That way, she's always going to be preparing food for us. And we'll make her the hunter as well. We'll make that a priority of three. Next, we're going to come up to Alfred. He's going to be responsible for farming and cutting down trees. So we're going to make growing a priority of two and harvesting a priority of two. We're also going to make hunting a priority of three. So now we have two hunters. That means we're always going to get a nice steady supply of animal carcasses. And we'll give him cut plants as three. And there we go. So that's their main jobs down. Now we're going to go through and give Eleanor and Alfred a priority of four for construction. And the same for mining. Fantastic. Next is Stuart. That's closing doors, lighting braziers, etc, etc. We're going to give everybody a priority of five for that. And then finally, hauling. Hauling is the transport of goods around our settlement. It's actually quite important. For the minute, I'm going to give everyone a priority of four for that. But so in the future, when I start getting settlers with bugger all skills, I'll then make them permanent hauler and we'll give them a priority of two or three. For the minute, I'm just going to give everyone a priority of four for hauling. And there we go. As we get more settlers, we'll go through and fill out the rest of the jobs. But for the moment, this is all the jobs that we need. And that brings us over to our management tab. In the management tab, we decide the equipment that our settlers will use. For instance, clothing, armor, weapons, etc, etc. As we highlight the Sterling, we'll see that he's got a 40 in melee, but zero in marksman. So obviously he's going to be using melee weapons, swords, shields, spears, etc, etc. So we're going to go across here and we're going to make him melee one-handed weapon. We'll give him a shield. And then because he's up close and personal, we'll make sure that he's wearing a helmet and he's got armor. Also, because he's the only doctor we have, we'll tick the self-tend button, meaning that if he gets injured, he'll look after himself. Now, as we highlight Eleanor, we'll see that she has marksman of 30 and nothing in melee. And same goes for Alfred. So we'll make them both range. So we'll give them a ranged weapon, no shield, and we won't give them any armor or helmets at the moment because I don't have enough to spare and hopefully they shouldn't be in harm's way. And there we go. For the minute, that's all the little bit of management done. Next, we're going to come here and we're going to allow all these resources to be collected and used. Fantastic. As you can see, we've got a couple of bows, some swords, some food, some booze, some timber. Good little start here. We'll be using all these things. So as you can see in this map, there's a nice big river that runs down the middle. We've got some clay over here. We've got some stone and some iron over here. There's more stone and iron and such over here. We're just going around. Plenty of resources for us to play with. So I do not see us running out of resources anytime soon. So that is fantastic. Soon we will have to start mining all this stone because we're going to need it. But for the moment, we just need timber. So very quickly, straight off the bat in this episode, we want to build a defensible little hut. Nothing too special, just something to keep everyone dry and warm. I do have plans for this area here. So I want to stay away from that area as much as possible. So we're going to build over here. So what we'll do is we'll select some trees to be chopped. 
So we'll just select those. There we go. Now they'll chop down for timber. We'll put a storage space over here. There you go. Just a temporary storage space so they can put all the timber and everything we collect over here. So next we'll tell them to harvest all this stuff on the ground. That way we can get sticks and straw and whatever else is on the ground. And now let's start building. So we're just going to build them a little place to live for the minute. Just to get us through the first night. So there's the walls. Give them some doors. Give them some windows. Give them some floors. And then finally, a bed in each room. There you go. Very, very basic. That will start us off well. So let's hit play and get it built. And there we go, done. As you can see, they now have a place to sleep tonight. That's great. Now we can build the rest of this hut, confident knowing that they have a place to sleep tonight. So we're gonna need more rooms, because obviously we're gonna be getting more and more settlers. And even though this is only a temporary living space, what I have in mind is gonna take a long time to build. And so we need a place for them to live for the moment. So we're gonna build this to house 10 settlers. At the moment, we can only fit three. So that will be the five on that side. They can start building that while we continue. So there we go, now we've laid down the plans for the first 10 bedrooms. So now we'll put in stairs. Now in this little hallway here, this will be a place for entertainment. So we'll put down a couple of backgammon tables so they can have some fun. And we'll give them a couple of places to pray. There we go. So now they have couple of different places to pray and they've got some backgammon tables so they can have a bit of fun. That's now the living quarters taken care of. So this little section here will be our workshops. So it will be our library. It will house our food preparation, our brick making, everything and anything else. So later on, we're going to want to separate these things and put them in their own rooms. So then we get buffs and benefits for having them in separate rooms. But for the moment, we're just going to jam it all into one place. So straight away, we need a butchering table and a campfire and a basic research table. We'll continue filling that out as we go along. Now for the minute, we'll let them get this done. And there we go, that's our first night. We're all in bed. Nice warm roof over their heads. Fantastic. And so we don't run out of food, we better start harvesting some berries. So over here, we'll grab the berries and done. They'll start harvesting all this. And we're also gonna need some hay, so we better start harvesting some tall grass. As you can see, we're burning through the wood. So we're just going to keep chopping down tree after tree. It's all slowly coming together, as you can see. I need them to hurry up and build this floor so we can get our workshops built over here. But other than that, it's coming along nicely. Fantastic. Now we have the research table. So what the research table does is it allows us to research chronicles. Now, just like all the workshops, we queue up the crafting process of whatever that workshop produces. In this case, it is the chronicles. So we'll click on it. 
and then we've got options. So we can either select the amount of chronicles we want to produce, whether it be 53 or whatever. We can make it until they hit a certain amount of chronicles, or we can do it forever. For the moment, we're going to set it forever and allow the sterling to produce as many as we possibly can. The reason for this, we use chronicles to purchase research here in the research tab. We have 25 available at the moment, which is good because we need it to get architecture. Once we unlock architecture, we get wooden beams, which is good. We're going to do that right now. Done. Now, the reason why we need wooden beams is when we're building a structure, there is a stability of four. So anything touching the ground gets a stability of four. And then when you build on top of a stability of four, you also get a stability of four. So for instance, these bottom walls here are stability of four. So in turn, these ones up above are also stability of four. But as we get further and further away from these walls, we're going to get less and less stability. So as you see here, this one down here, stability of four. This one here has a stability of three. This one here will have a stability of two. That one there will have a stability of one. And then we can't build in the middle because it no longer has stability. So what do we do? We can put down wooden beams. So that, that beam becomes a stability of four when connected to a stability of four. So as we count it out, we'll go one, two, three, four. We'll build that there. We'll let us. So we'll build it there because of the stairs. Done. And now when you look, we should be able to build on top. There we go. See? And but once again, the rule of four. When we come down, we go one, two, three, four. So anywhere in here, we can't build. So once again, throw down another beam, go back up, and we can now put floor down again. There we go. So this is good. This will now be the workshop getting built. So now we can move on to the next floor. The next floor will be basic storage. So we'll just build basic storage like so. Done. We'll then add some stairs. Like that. We'll then add a floor. There'll be two around. Might be getting a bit difficult to see now. Just move that floor a little bit. Put it in there. Perfect. No, I think I prefer it. One space across. Not that it matters. There we go. Now we'll put in the beams. One, two. And then we can put a roof in, eh? Put beams here. And actually scrap those beams. We'll have to run it the opposite direction. So what we'll do, run a beam. Nope, too long. Bugger. So we'll have to put a couple of center pillars in here and here because we can only span so far with the beams. So we'll put one here and one here. Perfect. And then we can put the beams off of those. So we'll go one here, one here, one here, one here. Done. And now we can put a roof on it. Done. Now we're going to top it off with some Merlons around the outside. Across here, across here. Fix up the corners. Now we've given them an absolute bucket load to do before our first raid because they need to have that defensible structure done by then. Might set this back just one more. I'm not sure if I actually like what I've done here, but we'll see. So I'll just plop that in. That'll be all right. Now let's hit play and get this built. We're on the clock. So we're going to delete this block here and then we're going to build a cellar underneath our base. I usually like having stairs running down to my cellar, but 
I'm trying to keep this all very compact for the moment, so I'm going to use a ladder, which will slow the process down ever so slightly. But this is once again only temporary, so I'm not too concerned. Now we're going to be very careful when building a cellar because you don't want to accidentally have a cave in and lose the entire building. We have to remember our rule of thumb. We can only dig four spaces away from any structure. Then we have to put down another beam. Okay, there we go. So they've deleted that space. Now I'll tell them to mine it. So now they're going to dig that little space out. When building a food cellar, you want to go down two levels because you want at least two levels of soil above you. That way, the temperature in the cellar stays quite low because food will rot. You want it to be as cold as possible in there. There are also other factors that I have to take into account too. The fact that food on the ground will rot regardless. So sooner or later, we are going to need to research preserving food, which will give us shelves. Then we can put all our food on shelves and then we no longer have an issue. But for the minute, we're sort of stuck. There we go. Now the butchering table is complete. So we'll come in here. We're going to click on raw meat as the production. We're going to set the amount forever. And now they'll continue to butcher carcasses. Now, we don't have any carcasses at the moment, so we're going to select some. So we can click on Overview, and it will bring up all the wildlife in the area. And then we can jump to these animals. Or we can look around and find them. But here, we've got one right here on the edge of the map. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click over here. And we're going to tell them to hunt it. Also, there's a couple of dead ones over here, which is perfect. We can them to collect these as well and here we have a wolf we're going to tell them to hunt the wolf too perfect now i can also just go to the overview and click on all these all these boxes here and they'll go out and hunt them but i've got to also remember i like to leave breeding pairs and etc etc leave the young you don't want to go killing off all the wildlife and then we starve to death so we desperately need to research furniture because we need the bookshelves. Because at the moment, our books are out here in the weather, which is not good. They're going to decompose. So now I need to hurry up and research that. We have now researched enough to unlock furniture. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to come in here and grab the bookshelves. There are two different types. We have the wall bookshelf and the freestanding bookshelf. For the moment, we're going to do wall bookshelves. We're going to put them over here and we're going to go one, two, three. I can't do it there. You just do those. So there we go. We'll have two bookshelves just there for the moment. And then we'll have two freestanding. Give them enough space. One, two, three. There we go. So that'll be good. We'll have bookshelves in here so then we can get the books out of the weather. Now, next we're going to change the Chronicles to 25. So that way, the Sterling will build Chronicles to 25. Then he's going to stop because we need our base built before we get any raids. Now we're going to click here on the campfire. We're going to go meal prep. And we're going to do meal prep forever. Same as the butcher's table. That way, they'll chop everything up at the butcher's table, cook it here at the campfire, and then we will have plenty of food for winter. Now, as you can see, we have a merchant in our town, Goodwin. We could send someone over and buy things off him, but for the moment, he's got nothing we want or need. So we're just going to ignore him. Pretend he's not even there. There's a wolf running around our base, so we're going to mark him for slaughter. Ah, oh, never mind, it's domestic. Okay, we have a domestic wolf. I call the big one Beatty. We really need to start building a cellar because we have so much raw meat just sitting there out in the weather, turning to crud. Oh, look at all that meat. It's such a shame. I'm going to change the jobs. The Sterling's not doing much at the moment. So we're going to make him a miner over everything else so he can start digging. There we go. I just saw him dig this. Fantastic. Now we're going to dig down another level. And we're going to put a ladder in here so then they can get down. 
because we need to get this cellar built as fast as possible. So there's first ladder in. Go. Get to work. We'll tell the Sterling to prioritize that ladder. And then he can dig down a level. In his own time, I guess. There we go. Now get down there, Sterling, and dig it. Sterling. There we go. Now he's digging the next level. Done. Now, we're going to head down. We'll add another ladder. There we go. Whoops. Put, helps when I put it on the right side, doesn't it? So put in another ladder in here. Done. There we go. So now you'll be able to hit the bottom. Now, we're going to dig this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we can go five either direction, which is more than we need. What we'll do is we will do a nice easy one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. Then we're going to go one, two, three, four. And once again, four that direction, four that direction. Then we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're digging this tunnel out like this because this will be where our beams are. One, two, three, four. And that should be the edge. Perfect. As you can see, that's where the beams will be running. I'm just sitting here wondering if I should just do it slightly further out. Well, no, I think that will be perfect for the moment. We only need a small cellar because I have to keep reminding myself, this is not permanent. So that will be perfect, just like that. So we'll let him dig that out. If we see the entire building collapse, we know we've stuffed up. And then we'll have a cellar. So I really didn't want to build the cellar just yet because I need all hands on deck building this building. But it's no good being able to defend against a raid if my people starve to death in the process. So... We have to build it. We're almost there. So that's the first section in. Second section in. Third section in. There we go. Now we're going to tell the Sterling to prioritize these and get them built. After hours, I've prioritized those last two beams. It's risky because they should be in bed, but... I just need to get this done as soon as possible. It's starting to worry me a little bit, to be honest. So there's the Sterling. Now he can go off the bed. Off he goes. And now Eleanor's going to come down and build the last beam. Smack, smack, smack. Come on, Eleanor. Go back to bed. And there we have it. So now we'll be able to select this entire area. Like so. They're going to come in, dig these out safely. And then we can start building our storage down here, which is fantastic. One of the pros of it being a ladder down to the cellar and not the stairs, though, is that animals can't... I was about to say, animals can't get down there, but I didn't realise they can. Well, cat's in there. Made me a liar. I'd actually never seen an animal use the ladders before. Ah, oh, that animal's gonna... That, that cat is gonna eat our food when we put it down there, isn't it? Um... We're going to send the cat to the farm. Then we don't have to worry about our food anymore. Just anyone that likes cats, don't don't watch it go to the farm, okay? Just just close your eyes for the next few minutes. Okay? Okay. So the internal storage, I'm setting that up now. It's not going to store food or carcasses. It's not going to store materials. It's not going to store seeds, or fodder, or waste, or books, or medicine. Medicine, carcasses, food, seeds, they'll be stored in the cellar. Over here, clear all. This will only store materials, and waste, and fodder. So, our building materials will be outside, where because they don't decompose. So, timber or clay, all that sort of stuff outside. Inside, in this area here, will be things that don't need to go in the cellar, but do need to stay out of the weather. So that will be here. Clothing, weapons, 
etc., etc. And then the cellar down here will house food. We now have enough research for preserving food. So we're going to unlock that. Done. We can now build shelving. So what we'll do is we're going to come down. So we're going to come down here to the bottom to furniture. We're going to go shelves. And we're going to go and build a hall. Well, we'll start by building one. So now what I'm also going to do is we're going to separate the cellar. So this part of the cellar here, this will be for carcasses. So we'll clear everything. And that will just be for all our carcasses. Then all this section here will be shelving, which will house our food. So there we go. Our first shelf is built. So when we click on it, we're not going to house material. We will house seeds, medicine, and food. Now, let's copy and go paste, paste, paste. There we go. Now we're going to go across here. We'll just shrink this ever so slightly. There we go. Plenty of space for food, plenty of space for carcasses. Now, we must remember the carcasses will rot because it's on dirt. But if all goes to plan, the carcasses shouldn't actually last that long. They should be chopped up and turned into food quite quickly. It's not like it's going to be sitting around for long periods of time. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, let's get on with the rest of this build. Because at any point now, we might get attacked. And the way we are, we're not going to win it. So we need our defensive structure built. All hands on deck. Usually there is a reason why, straight off the bat, you don't go for something this large as a defensible structure. Usually you start with something a bit smaller that can be built in a couple of days. But I am the Sterling. Go big or go home. Here we go. See, this is what I was talking about. We have a new settler, Salvation. You'd never seen anyone run so fast as Keol in your life. They want to eat me, he cried out. Wide-eyed, Sterlington settlers checked their children and livestock were gathered in. It's ravages, they whispered. Would you help Keol escape? The pursuers may be hungry for revenge. So we're going to let him stay. Pause. We've got one day and 21 hours till the search party arrives. It's one archer and two marauders, which isn't the end of the world. Let's be honest, okay? We can probably take them without needing this structure built. But we might get hurt. Someone might die. Most of us are marksmen. We've only got the sterling as melee. So we really should knuckle down and get this done finally. But first, we need to change Keol's name. Priorities and all that. I'd like to introduce... Athelstan. So we'll change his schedule and give him the same schedule as everyone else. Done. Next, we're coming here to the jobs panel. The usual. Patient. And convalesce. Priority one. He has an 18 in medicine, which isn't the end of the world. So we'll make that a number two priority. So he can be our backup doctor. Sterling is the main doctor. But if Sterling is occupied, Athelstan will be our second doctor. No urgent haul. He's not a hunter. We'll give him a construction of four. I would prefer for the experts to deal with growing and harvesting our food because I want the maximum yield we can possibly get. So we're not going to make him a backup farmer. Same goes for the animals. He can mine. Same. He can cut plants. That's fine. Same goes for cooking, craft, smithing carpentry and tailoring he can be a backup research and artist but we're going to make him a professional hauler and a professional steward so there we go he'll be running around transporting everything which is good we needed this i think we might also put him as a professional in construction that way things will get done now we come to management he has a 10 in marksman and only a 3 in melee. So we're going another archer. So we're going to go ranged. Don't need a shield. Don't need helmet. Don't need armor. There we go. Join the ranks, Athelstead. So now, because we're on the wire, everybody's going to have a priority of two construction. 
and then I'll change that back afterwards. We need to get this done. Here we go. One day and eight hours left. Hopefully we've got just enough wood to be able to finish this because we don't have time to be chopping any more trees. So whatever wood we've got, that's it. So let's get this going. Sterling and Alfred are praying. That ain't going to help you. We had to wake up Athelston. Lazy sod. Look, he keeps going back to bed. Is he injured? Ah, oh, he's got mild concussion. Oh yeah, we'll protect you. You just sleep. Don't worry about it helping. You just you just have a nap, okay? Don't we don't want you to push yourself. He's not off to a good start, I tell ya. If this is this is how the future's gonna look for him, I'm not happy. I think I'm out of the timber. Bugger! I'm out of timber. Ah, Come on, can we chop some in time? That is the question. Come on. We're down to one day and one hour. We're running our trees in this area. Basically, oh, we've got some more here. We're slowly running out of more and more trees. Come on. Sterling, what are you doing? I don't know if we're going to make it. 23 hours left. This is not good. Come on, chop faster. Let's go, let's go. 22 hours. Don't worry about building downstairs. That's not going to save us now. We're wasting all that timber downstairs. We need it upstairs. Come on. 20 hours and 51 minutes. Don't care that the research is available. We've got more important things to worry about. Come on. Chop, 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 chop. Okay. At least prioritize that. Um, that. That. Come on. Prioritize some building of the floors. We need floors. Because if we can at least get out to this section here, we can use it. We don't need it all. Come on. Desperate times. Oh, it's not time to stop work now. 17 hours. This might just be it. I guess they do have to rest if they're going to be fighting the battle tomorrow. Well, at least if we survive this raid, we'll have this for the next raid. 15 hours. Desperately just trying to get this last little bit in before the raid. Come on. Get it done. Come on. Okay. So that's good. We can at least use a little bit of this wall. I just needed to get them off the ground. Now, hopefully they attack from this side. Because if they attack from this side, well, we're kind of stuffed. Because there's not much we can do. Ten hours. Let them rest now. So they're awake. Seven hours and 51 minutes to the raid. Today's the day. Are they going to get a little bit of work done? Maybe. Plenty to chop over here still. What's close by? Well, that's close by, so we can chop that one down. What else we got? We've got a couple uh, growing back. They grow back so quick. It's unbelievable. Look at them. I feel like I'm always chopping down the same trees. Okay. Get chopping. Chop, chop, chop. We've got six hours, we might get a little bit of work done. See? We're getting rotten meat now. Just under four hours to go. Violent extortionists. They came with butcher's knives, wearing bloody aprons. Be fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman, shouted the largest, laughing uproariously. Some had set up campfires with spits and large pots. Send Athelston on out then. We're ready for our dinner. You stood your ground refusing to give in to their demands. Damn right we do. So here we go. One's got a shield and a club. Ha! 
Huh. None of them seem to be archers. I was under the impression that one... Okay, we've got three people, three marauders. One with an axe, one with a club and shield, one with a spear. No archers. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I wanted to kill them and take their bows. So where, where are they coming from? So they're going to come this way. Where are we? Ah. Oh. Of course, they're coming from the side we don't have defended. But we can plant ourselves up here somewhere. That will be fine. So here we go. Let's get them ready. We'll call to arms. Draft. Perfect. Now, we're going to stick our archers up top. So, Alfred and Eleanor, straight up top. There we go. Now, we're going to have the Sterling bravely stand his ground, if I can collect him, bravely stand his ground down here in the foyer. So, if anyone comes through the door, he's ready for them. But hopefully, it won't come to that. So, we'll push play and here we go. So, here we go. Where are they coming from? They come. The archers are picking them off. Shocking shots. So we're going to move Alfred down here. Eleanor down here. That way they can pick them off as they're at the door. Come on. Get to work. Oh, we're too high for it. That's not good. All that work for nothing. Stand there. You ready, Sterling? You're in for the fight of your life, buddy. I think what we'll do is we'll just let him in, eh? Go, Sterling. We were victorious. Which sucks, because I don't think we did very good with our structure. Once they got in too close, we couldn't hit them. That's something we're going to have to think about. Go get them. Okay. So, we're going to collect all that stuff. Perfect. Whoops. Okay. Next, we're going to come up to management. And we're going to allow everybody now to have helmets and armor. Right. We're going to undraft everyone. Beautiful. Now, the problem is, the way I've got the Merlons is they're straight up. So they can only fire what they can see. Ideally, I need them off. The building so there's a hole in the bottom that they can shoot down from so there's a bit of a design flaw on our building so whether or not i want to go across and rebuild everything that's the big question now isn't it because what i could do is build them like that and see how they have a hole at the bottom to fire from We both know that that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to go across and rebuild that. We've got the time. So let's just quickly do that now. Well, that. Done. And now we'll just delete the original wall. So that can be deleted. That can be deleted. That's deleted. Oi, that's not good. Silly Sterling, wow. So there we go. I thought I'd just give you a lesson on what not to do, right? I knew exactly what I was doing then. That, that was deliberate. So that was completely deliberate. Just showing you what it is you shouldn't do. So now I can show you what you should do, and that is change it to single layer delete only. Right? Single layer. That way we can go select, and it's only going to do the Morlons. 
not the entire wall we've spent hours on end building. <sighs> Seriously, sometimes I even surprise me. There we go. And then we can cancel these. And we can get that done, eh? Just fill this in with some wall. What's going on here? Have I told that to delete? Oh, it's not built yet. Okay, that's all right. So I was wondering what was going on there. Okay. So I'll get that built and we can move on. Before we go too much further, I need to build a prior so we can burn all the bodies. So we'll also have to collect some timber and we can get along with it. And here we go. I'd like to introduce you to the Fort Sterlington. It is finally complete. I don't mind it. No, oh, there's one little bit they have to do. But anyway, it's essentially complete. We'll call it complete, eh? Now we just run around hauling things. We're starting to get a bit low on food. So I'm going to come over here. I know it looks like we've got a lot, but winter's on our tail. So we need to really start thinking about preparing for the winter. So we're going to harvest these berries. And these berries. And these berries. We're also going to come over here to the river. Bang, bang. We've got two fishes. So we're going to fish all that fish. Little lettuce. Why won't it lettuce? I do not know why it won't lettuce. Maybe these ones. Can I fish this? Okay, I can fish this. I don't know. What are they? Oh, the eels. I have no idea what we do with the eels. Oh, yeah, we can we can fish them. Okay. So, we're fishing the eels and the fish. So, we've got plenty of fish there. We'll, we'll get all that. We're hauling everything else. And so, it's all hands on deck, cleaning up, getting everything ready. And now that that is complete, our next job will be mining. Before winter, we need to get some clay so we can start making clay bricks, so we can make braziers, so we can warm up the hut, uh, warm up the fort during winter, because at the moment they're going to freeze to death. Then we need to start mining the stone. We need stone bricks so we can build our castle, which our castle will be located right here. That's going to be our castle. As I said, our fort will go. It's not a permanent structure, even though it's very pretty. It's a shame it's gonna go. What we're gonna build is gonna dwarf this. So that's what's gonna go here. Sadly, this is all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.